Okay, hello. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a spoiler-filled breakdown of a book that I recently finished called Pen Pal by J.T. Geisinger, I think is how I say the name. So I just need to say this right now. I picked this book up. It was on Kindle Unlimited. I knew it was a smutty book and I was like, hell yeah, I'm in the mood for just something easy for me to breeze through, to read, and not have to think too hard about what's going on. Let me tell you that this book is not a casual little smutty book. The reason I'm doing this video is because this book had me in a fucking twisty, windy whirlwind of emotions and I just did not expect what happened. So the way this video is gonna go is that I'm just gonna say what happens in the book. And yeah, that that's kind of it. There's not gonna be much else other than that. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you as well that I rated this book five stars because holy shit, I just completely took me by surprise. And I highly recommend it. Oh my gosh. So it starts off, I had to write notes because I, <laughs> I will get lost if I do not follow some notes. It starts with Kayla at her husband's funeral. We learn as the reader that he drowned when they were out on their boat and Kayla feels kind of guilty for it because she didn't do anything to help him. We also learn that like she remembers hearing a scream, like it's very, you know, it's trauma. Something has happened and she is dealing with that trauma. And now we're following her in, well, her life without her husband and how different it is and how kind of broken she is. So she goes back home and she finds a letter like on her kitchen counter and she doesn't know how it got there, but it's from uh, the state penitentiary. I think they're in the state of Washington. So like Washington state penitentiary from a guy named Dante. And it essentially says, um, you know, I'll fucking read it. It says, I'll wait forever if I have to. And it's signed Dante and that's it. And she responds to it and says, so what are you waiting for or something like that? And so at this point, when I was reading, I was like, okay, this is going to turn into like one of those prison pen pal things uh, and he's going to come out of prison and he's going to make her all happy. You know, just a typical smut plot point where sad wife dealing with trauma gets saved by a guy who's in prison who actually turns out to not be such a bad guy, probably saved someone and went to jail for it or whatever, right? Some kind of dark thing, like killed a guy to save someone else and goes to prison for it. That's what I was thinking. Then we also learn her house is quite old and it needs a lot of work done. So she has to call for um, like different contractors to come in and look, especially because she has a leak in her ceiling. So her kitchen is like, there's just water going in. She has like buckets in there. She also has an electrical problem. She's been saying that the doorbell keeps going off even though no one's there and the lights flicker, just different things, right? And she calls, she gets a guy to come over. He's like a younger kind of stoner type of dude, but he's super nice and he checks the electrical and he tells her, he's like, your electrical's fine. Nothing's wrong with your electrical. Uh, and she's like, well, he's probably just really high and doesn't really know how to do his job. And then he also says that the ceiling, it looks like a really tough job. She'd have to find someone else to do it. And then she, you know, she has like a headache and he tells her, oh, you know, I used to have a lot of headaches, uh, mostly because I was dealing with a lot of stuff. So I went to go see a therapist and it helped. And she's like, yeah, I don't need a therapist, you know, kind of disregards him. He's a stoner. She doesn't need to worry about it anymore. So the strange things happening in the house, she's hearing sounds, she's seeing little like shadows and things, and she's also hearing voices. She's kind of just disregarding it as being an old house and you know, that she's tired and her she lost her husband. I was starting to think, oh my gosh, is this also kind of like a, like a haunting type of thing? Maybe, I don't know, it's weird. Then Aiden comes into the picture. He's a contractor who comes in to look at her roof, look at what she needs to get done. And it's kind of interesting. So th this is where the romance part comes in. They begin on kind of a very rocky, like snippy attitude toward each other. They're kind of very snarky with one another, but it's also, it's, ki it's kind of cute and endearing and pretty respectful also, because he's very straightforward. He will say what he's thinking, sort of. Um, and he's also very patient with her. She never tells him that her husband is dead. She just says that they're separated, but she still wears the ring and he's super responsible or not responsible. He's super respectful about that. He doesn't try to push her boundaries or anything. And he's not also like super paranoid about, oh, she's going back with her husband. Now this is when shit starts to get weird. So the letters have continued to arrive. And at this point, she's been seeing like shadows. She gets um, cameras put in her house by one of Aiden's friends who does like a security, he owns like a security company. And she, I start thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe this guy in prison because the prison guy is called Dante. 
the clearly very hot, very sexy romance that started with Aiden is, you know, that's the main thing. So this Dante guy is not going to be some hot prison guy who comes down and makes her feel all better. What if he's a stalker? So I was like, oh my gosh, like what if this turns into like a really creepy stalker thing and Aiden saves her, right? But then there's the ghost thing too. I was like, is there, uh, there's gonna also be this ghost subplot? So maybe they're gonna have to do like some kind of, I don't know, house cleansing together and figure out what's wrong. Maybe it's her husband that is haunting her. I had all these ideas. I was like, oh my gosh, it's all of this stuff. Right, in the meantime too, of all of this happening, there are very, very, very smutty scenes that are happening. Like it's, uh-huh. They do like chases with each other. I don't know. They're like role playing where he's like a bear and she's a bunny. He calls her bunny and they're chasing each other around naked. And then it's very aggressive, very hot, steamy sex. Okay. I was starting to get confused at this point. Cause I was like, okay, I'm getting the smut, but why is there this plot? That's like in the back of my head, like scratching there and it won't let go. And it doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel like a classic, smut book plot. It feels like I'm having these really hot things happening, but also what the fuck is happening here? This seems dark and this seems ominous. <clears throat> so Kayla has a maid. This maid, I'm gonna say it's a maid, but she, I don't know. I guess she's like a sweet old woman who comes and cleans their house. So yeah, maid. She is from Scotland. She's an older woman. Her name is Fiona and she still comes to clean the house and she sees Kayla and she says, uh, you know, Kayla's having headaches and she keeps seeing things and so Fiona says in Scotland that you know it's pretty common for there to be ghosts so she tells Kayla your house is haunted. And Kayla kind of refuses to accept that. I mean, she's also kind of in the throes of this romance with Aiden and she doesn't want to believe in ghosts. I mean, really, it's kind of weird, right? Like, why would anyone be haunting this super old house that is in disrepair anyways? So she has that going on. On top of that, Aiden also said uh, that he understands that she's still wearing her wedding ring, but until she's ready to really be with him, she'll take that ring off. So he basically tells her, you can't see me until you're ready to take your ring off, which is fair for him. I was like, I, I get that. And uh, like a lot of time has gone, not a lot, but quite a bit of time has gone by and it makes sense, you know, if you, um, Kayla's being a little secretive and all that, but it also helps her focus on what's going on in her house. So she gets utterly creeped out in her house. I mean, there's floorboards that are creaking. It's creepy. So she finally caves in, calls Fiona, tells her, hey, I need you and your sister to come and help do the seance thing in my house because Fiona's sister is a medium and she does this for a living. And so they come over and a lot of seancey things happen, all that creepy shit that happens. Kayla gets like touched and she is hearing things and then her ring like falls through the ceiling. It's a whole fucking ordeal. But basically this, the, the seance brings forth the reveal that I did not expect, which is that Kayla is dead. Kayla is the one who died, not her husband. And at this point I was like, what the fuck? So you kind of backtrack at this point where you find out that Kayla's husband, Michael, is actually like they, they married young and they were happy, but you know, around the age of 20 ish, 25 ish is when adults will start presenting with schizophrenia. And Michael was presenting with that. Michael, her husband was a very smart, like PhD, PhDs, what the fuck am I saying? PhDs and master's degrees, professor, very intellectual, but also very narcissistic. So now he's a schizophrenic, narcissistic man who thinks that the government is trying to get his formulas or whatever. But yeah, that made their relationship very difficult. But what really broke their relationship, they got divorced because Kayla was pregnant. And now big, big trigger warning, if you do not want to hear something about, uh, you know, um, yeah, just trigger warning, pregnancy, something bad. Okay. Skip to this time. I'll put a little time if you don't want to hear this. Michael thought that Kayla was pregnant with an alien baby thing. So he kicked her so hard multiple times in the abdomen. She miscarried very late into the pregnancy. So yeah, that ended their relationship. And you know, they separated. He went to like an institution or something. And then she met Aiden. So all the scenes that we get through the book where she meets Aiden, like coming over to help her with the hole in her roof or whatever, all of that is how she met Aiden. You just kind of get her reliving 
thing, basically what it was like after her divorce with her husband, but this time she's dead and she's reliving it because it was some of the best times of her life. And you learn that not only did Michael kill her on the boat, he also killed Aiden. So Aiden and Kayla died at the same time. And it was on the book and it was on New Year's Eve at, on the book, on the boat. They went on the boat on New Year's Eve and they were out there and Michael was actually using the boat as a place to stay. So he was on the boat with them and he had a gun and he thought that they were the government and he shot Aiden in the head and then he drowned Kayla. So yeah, I was like, what the actual fuck? Like, this is not what I expected from a smut book. I expected your typical, classic, steamy romance plotline. Not a mind-bending, supernatural, tragic, thriller smut book. It was, it caught me so much by surprise, and I cannot be more thankful that I saw this book being like shown on Instagram multiple times on different of accounts that I oftentimes like scroll by very quickly because romance is not typically my thing. I very rarely pick up romance, but I kept seeing it. So I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll just grab it, see what it's like. I probably won't be that great, but it'll be like a nice mind numbing read for me. And it was not, I was transported. So many emotions were felt. Oh my gosh, so much pain. I must say the cover for this book needs to be changed. You cannot, I mean, I get that it is a smut book, but can we put like a ghost in there somewhere? I did mention it to someone though. And they said, well, he has like a skull right on his chest. And I was like, that's not enough. I need more than that. I need something that indicates that this book is going to be more than just really hot sex. So yeah, I just needed to share that and get that off my chest. I wonder if you've read the book already and I don't, I'm very sorry if you haven't and you were just really curious about what this is. I'm very sorry if it deters you from picking up the book because it is quite a reveal. But if you do pick it up after watching this, please let me know if your experience of the book is different than mine or if you also are like really into, like if it is as good of a read, I don't know. Cause sometimes I feel like spoilers can really ruin an experience, but the way this book was written, I feel like even if you know what the big reveal is, it's just fun to get there. Like the journey in itself, the way it's written, so freaking good. So yeah, all this to say that after reading this book, I am definitely more interested in picking smutty romances because now, now I'm like, the plot might actually be really good. Definitely this author, I'm interested to pick up more by this author. I don't know if it's a man or a woman actually. I'll have to look it up later, but that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, that's your prerogative. I will see you in the next one. Bye.